everyone, my name is Amber, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about some 5 star predictions. So I actually made one of these videos last year and I didn't follow through with it. I read two books I think from that list. I'm ashamed because I did really really badly. The thing is with my 5 star prediction books or books that I predict will be 5 stars, I really struggle to read them because I worry that they're not going to be 5 star books and they're going to disappoint me and that I will be wrong. So I'm not really sure whether making this video is a good idea because it may just put me off from reading all of these books in the future. However there are some books on my shelf that I'm so so excited to read because I think they're going to be amazing and I wanted to share them with you and then maybe I can come back to this video at the end of the year or beginning of next year and see if any of them were correct, if I even read any of them. I know that for a fact that I will be reading at least two of them. <laughs> So I'll be doing just as well as I did in 2021. So the first book I think I will give five stars is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This is a epic fantasy book. It's based around ancient Rome, I believe. It's sort of a gladiator-esque fantasy story. I believe the main character is setting out to get revenge. I'm not sure if it's whether on the people who killed his family, his wife, his partner, not entirely sure but it's a revenge story which I love, it's one of my favourites and it's reminding me a little bit of Spartacus, The Legend of Spartacus and the TV show in that it's gladiator fantasy and also revenge fantasy. I have heard that the author doesn't portray female characters very well in this book, I'm not sure if he uses them as kind of a plot point, plot element to enhance the main character, male main character's growth or if it's just a very bad portrayal of female characters in general or female personalities. So I am going into it knowing that and I am still predicting that I will rate this five stars just because of the setting. I have heard that the author improves upon his portrayal of female characters in the second book. I believe there are only two books out right now and hopefully he continues to improve and I don't know if that's a result of feedback or what but I'm very pleased to hear that he has done better. S.A. Chakraborty blurbed this book and I think loved it. She said it's a gripping tale. I love S.A. Chakraborty. I trust her recommendations. So I'm looking forward to reading this one and I think I'm going to love it. Next we have one that is kind of cheating because I have already started it and I am very much enjoying it and that is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This one is a memoir by Chanel. She is the survivor of the Stanford sexual assault case involving a guy called Brock Turner I believe. She was assaulted by him after she attended a party, she was kind of blackout drunk, can't remember it. Because she was pressing charges she was taken to court and basically interrogated herself and it's kind of like a look on how everything has affected her, how she is now living her life and how the media and the court system cover these cases or deal with these cases with women who have been sexually assaulted. I believe Brock Turner was also like a star athlete, I think he was a swimmer at Stanford and so that also made everyone a bit more biased to him and he had a lot of leeway there. I am currently I think six chapters into it and I'm very much enjoying it. I honestly can't see myself rating this anything less than five stars. I am so impressed and kind of proud of Chanel Miller for telling her story like this. She is honestly just so brave and resilient. I am really really impressed so I'm hoping to give this five stars. I really think I will. Next we have one that has been going around booktube for the last year or so and everyone seems to love it so I'm jumping on the bandwagon I think I will really enjoy it as well and that is the sword of Kaigen so this one is pitched as the last airbender in terms of the elemental magic meets the poppy war in terms of the grimdark aspect I really love the poppy war the first two books the third one not so much but the point. And I love books with elemental powers, so those are two reasons why I think I will really enjoy this and give it five stars. Another reason is that I saw a couple of quotes on Twitter, they contained my absolute favourite tropes. I don't even know if there's a name for the trope, I'm going to have to look it up before I post a review or talk about this when I've read it because it's very important to me to kind of get that across to you. I think the situation that those quotes were happening in, it's one of my all time favourites, like it makes my heart swell, I get teary. If that's just from a quote on Twitter, I really think that I will die possibly <laughs> reading this book. I honestly think I'm going to adore it. I don't really know much about the plot. I know that the mother, I think, in this book fought in a war. She is now out of the army, whatever army she was fighting for, and now her son or her daughter is being kind of dragged into it and she has to protect her children. I know that this is set in kind of a greater universe or world by this author but they have stopped continuing that series but if I love this one I might read their other books, maybe that will encourage them if other people read the other books in this world to continue on writing this series, I don't know. Not that I want to force them <laughs> to continue writing but it's a shame that the series is unfinished whereas this book has done so well. 
I don't know, I'm really excited for this one for the reasons that I just mentioned. I really think I will give this five stars. I'm hoping it's going to be really well written. It's a really chunky book though, like most of the ones on this list. So I'm going to try to get to this in the next few months. Next we have another fantasy book and that is the sequel to a book that I did give five stars. So that's the reason why this is on the list. That is Heart of Flames by Nikki Palpareto. So this is the second book in the Crown of Feathers series. I loved Crown of Feathers. It's about Phoenix Riders, two sisters. One of them is awful and kills a baby phoenix. And so the other sister who had bonded with this baby phoenix goes off, joins the rebellion in order to become a phoenix rider. But there are also elements of feminism in there as well. Not just because the main character is female, but because she is trying to get into this phoenix academy and they won't let her because she is a woman. And so she has to disguise herself as a guy to be trained to ride phoenixes and to join this rebellion and then towards the end you know people start to realize maybe women can fight in the war and help us out maybe that would have been a good idea all along i loved the first book so so much i'm honestly expecting to adore the sequel. I do ha sometimes have issues with the second books in a series. I do have faith that the author has written a strong sequel here because the first book was so good. I'm really hoping I'm going to love it and I do want to read it soon. Next we have a non-fiction book, another one, and that is Savage Appetites. I heard about this one from Mara from Books Like Woe and another booktuber whose channel name is Reading Riley but I can't remember their name. Sorry, I'll leave those links down below. But they have been talking about this book kind of non-stop. It's non-fiction about, I think, four or five women in history who have been obsessed with true crime. And it kind of talks about them and their backstories and also just why women in general love true crime so much. I really think this is a, well, for one thing, it's a topic that really appeals to me. I do love true crime. I listen to lots of podcasts and I also have a true crime series on my channel where I read books in relation to cases, talk about the case and then review books. I also really like watching documentaries on true crime and I'm looking forward to reading this book and kind of examining why that is, not necessarily just for myself but other women as well because it does seem to be a really female heavy genre or topic, hobby I guess, although I do know a lot of men who are also into true crime as well. I think this one's going to be great, I can't wait to read it, I'm hoping to fit it in in February. If not then I will be reading it in March because I cannot wait. I think it sounds fantastic. Next we have another fantasy book. Apparently I have very high expectations for fantasy, which is probably why I keep getting into fantasy reading slumps. That is Oathbringer, but specifically part two. This is obviously the third book in the Stormlight Archive series, and I've heard this one starts to drag a little bit. So part one, I think is probably going to be a bit of a slog from what I have heard, but part two, I think will probably be better. I know that Brandon Sanderson's books towards the end, basically the fans call it the Sanderlanche, I believe, <laughs> because he packs everything into the last 200 pages and everything just goes a bit crazy. He starts throwing things at you. There's always an epic action scene at some sort of battle. I've read enough of his books to know that by now. So while I do believe part one will probably be a bit of a slog and probably most of this, I'm hoping the ending will make up for it and I'm going to love this book. I'm already really attached to all of the characters, apart from Shallon. <laughs> Of course, I've still not really connected with her and I don't think I will. Dalinar, Kaladin, Adeline, all of those characters I absolutely adore. So I think I'm going to love this book, particularly the second half, which is why I've got part two here and not part one. I think I'll probably give it five stars. I really hope to because I'm hoping it's going to be epic. Then we have a book by an author who I haven't read in years, but I really enjoyed his books when I did read them. And that is The Water Knife by Paolo Bacigalupi. So this one I think is dystopian post-apocalyptic. I'm trying to get more into cli-fi this year because climate change, environmentalism is something that I'm really passionate about and I think I should be allowing that to sort of bleed in to my fiction reading as well. And I'm subscribed to a cli-fi newsletter that promotes cli-fi works. I will leave a link to that down below. And I have a feeling, knowing what I know about this author's writing previously, knowing that it's a subject matter that really intrigues me, post-apocalypse where water is running out, I think I will love this book and I can't see any reason why I wouldn't. I've had this for years and I haven't read it yet just because, like I said, keep saying, I'm scared to read my five star predictions just in case they turn out not to be five stars. But I really do think that I'm going to love this book. I'm expecting it to be very fast paced. I believe it's a standalone. So that's quite good because I need to read more standalone books, I think. Although saying that, I mostly read standalone books in 2021. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just rambling. But I really love the catch line, catchphrase 
tagline for this, which is when the water runs out, blood will flow. It says here that it's an electrifying thriller set in a world on the edge of collapse. Set in the midst of a water war between Las Vegas and Phoenix, which I believe are deserty places, I think. My geography of the US is not great. I know Las Vegas is definitely in the desert. I think I'm going to love this one is what I'm trying to say and I can't wait to read it hopefully in March or April. And then finally this next book is one that has been on probably 20 different lists of mine because I need to read it. I'm convinced I'm going to love it because I love the first book and I still haven't finished this series because I'm scared that it's not going to live up to the first book. That is The Obelisk Gates by N.K. Jemisin. So this is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I adored the fifth season. I mostly loved it because of the twists but also the writing style was also excellent and I know that this book has received a lot of love and it's won the Hugo Awards but I'm still very scared to read it just in case I don't love it as much as I love the first one. So what I think I'm going to do is reread the first one and then go straight into this and kind of treat it as one long story and read the third book as well obviously rather than treat it as separate books in a trilogy because I think that's going to work better for me if I'm scared to read this one and I've been putting this one off for probably three or four years now since I read the fifth season and it's time for me to stop. I need to read it because I'm convinced I'm going to love it. I already love the characters in it. I love the world building as well. There's kind of like air bending. No, there's kind of like earth bending magic sort of and the world is almost about to collapse which again tropes that I love. So I can't see any reason why I wouldn't enjoy this book apart from my expectations being too high but my expectations are sky high so <laughs> it's fine. I can't do anything about that. I just need to read it I think and finally marathon the series because N.K. Jemisin deserves my love I think. So those are the books that I think I will rate five stars. I'm going to try my best to read them this year because I didn't last year like I said and that's a disappointment to me. I wanted to do a reaction video reacting to my five star predictions and I sucked at it in 2021. I'm quite confident I will be able to read them because I'm already reading Know My Name, Savage Appetite is on my TBR for February March, Oathbringer I was meant to be reading in the first quarter of the year. So that's already about half of the list. So I think I just need to get a grip really. I'm also now currently wondering where I've actually put the fifth season. I know I have it here somewhere, I just don't know where. And now I'm panicking that it's gone missing, although I don't think it has. Anyway, those are my five star predictions. Let me know if you've read any of these and if you rated them five stars or if you loved them. Don't tell me if you didn't enjoy them because I really don't want to know. Don't put me off because I'm finally going to get around to these books this year. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It means a lot to me. I'll speak to you all in the next one. Bye!